Hello, everyone, and welcome to three government contracting mistakes to avoid. Let's dive into this. Number one mistake to make in the federal space has to deal with a negative mindset, thinking, oh, how can I get a federal contract? Don't I need to work for the government or serve in the military? Doesn't it take too long? I heard they just go with the cheapest or you have to have some kind of certification. Not at all. When I started out well over 12 years ago, I was a graduate student. I didn't have any certifications. I didn't even have a corporation at that time. I just had a sole proprietorship. That's all I had. But there was something unique. There was something that I offered, which I'll talk about with tip number two. So back to the mindset. If you think negatively or you see tons of mountains and hills, then that's what you'll experience. Research by Carol Dweck has shown the power of a growth mindset. Students who believed that they could increase their grade did so. Students. So imagine as an entrepreneur, a small business owner, a gig worker, you're like, look, I'm going to win a contract. I'm going to end up being a million dollar business. I'm gonna win four government contracts. Why couldn't you? Because our mind, our mindset is so powerful. So please hone into it. By believing everything is possible, research has shown it can and will happen. It will can and will happen. If you think otherwise, then it's not the space for you. And that's okay. That's okay. There's tons of opportunities in this space. So this brings us to Number two, based on my over 12 years of experience in this space, and that is there's this thought that you have to already have business. You got to be a business owner. You have to have pricing in place. You need to be registered across the country. Uh, you had to have had some kind of clients or potentially you have a relationship with a large company. Those are those are all great things and great positions to be in, but but you don't. You instead need to ask yourself, are you an entrepreneur or are you an expert? Okay, that's question number one. Number two, you have to think about your value. I mentioned in mistake number one, I offered something special 12 years ago, right before I founded my flagship company. I offered analytic skills. I offered diversity and inclusion skills. I offered training. I was an expert. I was Dr. Parks. I was, oh, I'm Dr. Parks. I'm here to provide information on diversity and inclusion in the military. I mean, I'm having a book. I even have a book on the topic. Yeah. And I also worked with private sector clients, but I was an expert and it was awesome. I ended up with my flagship company obtaining several contracts, which you can too as an expert. There's the expertise that an agency or a prime contractor may be interested in. And it may take you here, which is great. For some, it might be, that's great, that's awesome. I just, that's where I wanna be. I wanna be here, whatever here means for you. And then I started to look around and I thought, okay, I wanna go beyond here. What does that take? And that's when I made that leap to entrepreneurial mindset. Oh my goodness, the government spends over $500 billion? They buy kosher potato chips? They buy technology? I can get multiple year contracts? and have ongoing revenue every month through staffing? And my mind was blown. I had no idea, no idea about the endless opportunities. And so you have to ask yourself, which one are you in? Entrepreneur, expert, and it's okay if you go back and forth because it takes a lot in both situations, especially if you decide to go the expert route. A bonus tip is get on any and every freelancer, Fiverr, Upwork type of platform so you're diversifying your revenue streams. Super important to do that. I have a third one for you all, a third one. But before I get into it, before I get into it, I just want to pause for a second. Please check out, it may be of interest to you, it's profitablecontracts.co, profitablecontracts.co. May have some tips that may land with you, especially if the government, kind of that idea is new for you, or even if you're experienced, take a look, profitablecontracts.co. And I'll drop it in the comments so that you all have that. So 
The third one is when it comes to government contracting, mentorship is key. But the mistake is people think, oh, I just have to figure out on my own. I'm going to go on YouTube. I'm just going to look on LinkedIn. And these are all great places. These are awesome places to go. I know for me, I could not figure out how to open like the trunk of my, my SUV when I first purchased it. I didn't know how to do it. There, it was it was very, very confusing. And I went on YouTube and I figured it out. I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Or when you rent a car and you're like, where do I go to, you know, get to where, where the open the gas hand get all that taken care of. Oh, oh my goodness. So I'm so grateful for YouTube. But in the federal space, it is a lot. It can be overwhelming. It can seem like you are learning another language. So having a mentor, having a guide is so vital. A few years in, my flagship company was a million dollar company. Fewer than 3% of women-owned companies in America, sometimes that stat varies, ever reach the million dollar mark. Now I have three that have done so, but I was kind of stuck and I was reaching out, I got all these mentors and I ended up with a particular mentor that just, whoa, took us to a whole nother level. And it was through that, that I really learned, oh my goodness, there's so many layers to government contracting. I thought, oh my goodness, I know enough, I'm good, I'm, I'm here, this is amazing. And remember, I started here. That was still not enough. Now it's beyond to the stratosphere. So that mentorship is so vital in the federal government space. And you may wonder, well, how do I get a mentor? How do I handle that? What do I do? Well, one way is definitely through networking. You definitely want to network. And there is an amazing website that you can go to. What you can do is you can go into this website and you can look for small businesses in your state. It's the SBA Small Business Dynamic Search website. And what I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that you do is you go to that website, you go to the state where you live, you put in the category that fits, especially if you're an expert. Say it's training. You put in the code that goes with training and it'll pull up a list of business owners. And guess what? It lists their phone numbers, their names, and also their email addresses. And this is a perfect opportunity to reach out to them. Hey, I'm really interested, really interested in the government space. I would love to learn more about you or if I could partner with you or if I could be of help because you never know when another small business owner is looking for an expert or even if you fit in the entrepreneur category, y'all could partner on work together. But just to quickly recap, one, you want to have that positive mindset. Number two, you have to ask yourself, are you an entrepreneur or are you an expert? And you can go back and forth. Number three is you need a mentor. You want to reach out to people. You know, I have a formal program through GovConWinners.com. Definitely want to check it out. Uh, that will be kicking off very soon. But what's so great is at least starting. As you go on this journey, you want to start. You want to start with that positive mindset because it's going to make all the difference. Research has shown it. It definitely has. And again, I'm so grateful to you all. So, so grateful. I will share that link. And if anytime I can ever be of assistance, please do not hesitate to contact me and definitely check out profitablecontracts.co. Until then, take care and don't forget, everything is possible.